Well, Tactical Channel 762 here. We are going to be a, doing a reloading video on the 77 by 58 cartridge. Um, any of you who own a Type 99 Arasaka will probably know that uh, 77 ammo isn't the cheapest. And about the only practical option if you own a Type 99 Arasaka is to reload. So I'm going to be showing you how I do this. It's This is not instructional. If you blow your face off, that's your own problem. Um, with any reloading, don't trust people on the internet and continue at your own risk. But this is just how I do it, so take it for face value. <clears throat> We're going to be using... IMR4895, CCI large rifle primers, it's just standard, non-magnums, nothing weird. 7.7 seven dies from Lee Precision, these are the Pace Setter series, and we're going to be using 30-06 brass from the range. So, first off, the shell holder, I've got this outside of the box because, you know, I'm nice and organized. I'm so organized I don't put stuff back where I find it. So, you're going to want to take your, your resizing and decapping die. You're going to want to turn the lock ring. Not all the way to the top, but almost. Bring your ram all the way up. And keep threading it until the contacts. Move your ram back down. Quarter turn on your die. And then just lock ring it down. I apologize if my hands are in the way. So. That's that far. This is a 30 out 6 case that's already been resized to 7.7. I don't have any unformed 30 out 6 brass. Also, forgive me for that. But uh, for video purposes, let's just say that's a. Uh, a 7 7. So, Lee resizing lubricant, which came with the, uh, with the press kit that I bought. Just a little tiny bit. Doesn't require much. You don't want too much, or you're going to get lube dents. But just roll it. Um, try to keep it off the shoulder. Try your best, but now a word of warning: you should have your brass lubricated. No matter when you put it into a resizing die, but you should also have this brass pre-tumbled in advance. So there we go. That would be the action that would turn a 30 out six case to what I've dubbed a 30 out seven. Now that you have that brass resized, you're going to want to trim your brass. There's multiple ways of doing it. 
how I tend to do it is the is the uh, the Wii cutter and lock stud. You need caliber specific trim pins, and those will come with a shell holder. The cutter, the shell holder, the piece that connects the shell holder to the drill will be will come in the kit and then you just need to buy your caliber specific components. This is how how I've always trimmed brass, it's a cheap way to do it. And then you also need some type of chamfering tool. I just use the, the cheap ones that come with the Lee kit. And I've probably chamfered two thousand rounds of various ammo with this, various brass with this, so a lot of people say these suck, I disagree. Yet again I use mine when it's chucked in a drill, so I'm going to take the drill, I'm going to chuck the shell holder, and take that. It's not a bad idea to tighten that down a little bit with some pliers. Especially because we're taking off a lot of material. You put your lock stud in there and then you just gotta hold on really. Gotta be careful. At a certain point, you'll feel that it stops cutting. You gotta pull it out. I always shake it a little bit to get the leftover crap out. And now you can see you've got a whole lot of debris on the outside of the case. So you take your chamfering tool, a little bit on the outside, try to get some of that crap out of there. There you go, there's a slight outside chamfer, slight inside chamfer. That's all you need. You're just trying to debur it, you're really not trying to remove any material. Now, at this point, since that was a rather hefty resizing operation, I would highly recommend annealing the brass purposes of this video I'm not going to show that but there are plenty of videos on annealing brass just don't overdo it but that will greatly relieve a lot of tension in the brass because the switch from 30 out 6 to 7 7 is a uh, it's a rather severe switch but now effectively you have a piece of 7 7 by 58 millimeter press. After that, well, after that, I'm just going to prime on the press. You can use. Oh, that's the wrong one. You can use different priming apparatuses, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to prime on the press because I don't want to use my auto prime and swap it out from doing 556 five, brass at the moment. Now you have a primed case. Now once you have your primed case, go on to powder charge. Alright, we're on to <clears throat> dropping the powder charge. Now before you continue, you want to make sure that this case is under minimum length. You probably should have done that before you prime the cases, honestly. We already checked that, and for purposes of this video, I'm not going to show that. 
not going to show measuring a case because you're not going to see the dial on the on the calipers anyway. But with your uh, your manual inside of your lead dies, it'll give you maximum trim length and maximum overall cartridge length. So listen to that. Don't listen to me. So now we're going to drop powder charge. I have this this powder measure set up to drop 27 grains of CFE 223 right now and I don't want to adjust that so I'm just going to take this case I'm going to drop two charges it fills it up almost all the way I'm going to just it's going to trickle charge we're dropping 40 grains of IMR4895. Now, I do not recommend you listen to my reloading data. Compare against published results and figure out how you're going to do it yourself. And actually, you know what? That dropped right at perfectly at 40 grains. This case that we just used for powder. We're going to dump out any extra. I'm going to tap it on the bench a couple times just to double check. Funnel. Here we go, we dropped our powder charge. So now, if you were smart, you would have had a cartridge tray or something like that out here, but. I overlook that. We're going to take the resizing and decapping die out. We are going to use our bullet seating die. Once again, ram down. touches quarter turn we have that dice set so we're going to take our primed charged case and then I'm going to use a pan lubed it's got a lot of lube all over it I'm going to use a pan lubed 185 grain cast bullet Set for a gas check. I don't have a gas check on it. So, yeah, that's a 185 grain Lee round nose cast bullet made from a two cavity Lee die, uh, Lee mold rather. Just guide the, the bullet and the case into your die. Make sure your ram is all the way down. Wipe away any loose extra lube. And that's ready to shoot. But what I always tend to do is I crimp my, my ammo. So we're going to take the bullet seating die out. And we're going to use the Lee Factory crimp die. I don't do this with jacketed bullets, I just do this with lead bullets because of their softer nature. Now, I've got this set for a very heavy crimp because that's just what I do with a soft cast bullet. That's just my personal preference. You can do it however you want to do it. As you can see, just the very edge is barely crimped over. Even though it's set to do a heavy crimp, it's not doing that much. So, that's how re I reload 7.7 by 58 ammo. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah, see you around. More videos coming soon. And yes, the rifle was unloaded. Just successfully made our round. 
bitch at me, you safety Nazis.